So in general, engineers, as I told you, try to simplify as much as possible the real situations. And that is what the three D general state of a stress but we deal with nine components uh, of stresses and so on, different from zero, sometimes, historically, has been simplified. Maybe this comes out that before, uh, since everything had to be solved analytically, then, uh, of course, simplifications were, requ were, were requested and, and required, uh, because otherwise the problem couldn't be solved. But uh, also nowadays, there are many problems. We will go there. There is a, a, a chapter specifically devoted to 2D problems in engineering, geotechnical, structural engineering, in which problems can be simplified. So that we know, in many cases, in advance, that what is the one principal stress. So in, in, in advance, just looking at the problem, we can make the simplification that one principal stress is something that we know in advance. I could mention some examples. We'll go back in, in the chapter uh, seven uh, on, on this topic. So imagine that is that the case. So we know in all points that the, the, the pr one principal stress is that one that we identify with XZ, okay? So the other ones we don't know what is the principal stress and so on. So we can also consider, I mean, uh, a certain uh, system of coordinates in which, in which one coordinate is always uh, the one corresponding to that first principal stress, known in advance, we call that out of plane coordinate. So the system, the system of coordinates, uh, the, the, the stress uh, components look like that. X and Y are any. Z is the one in which we have this principal direction. So the stress components look at that. By construction, sigma Z, tau XZ, which is the tangential stresses here are zero, and tau yz are zero, okay? So the, 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 stress, the stress components look at that. Of course, as I just change x and y, keeping z constants turn this x and y, then of course the components x and tau, sigma and tau xy uh, would change, but this sigma z, sigma z is not zero, eh? not necessarily, sometimes it's zero, but sometimes it's not, but sigma z would remain constant, okay? So imagine that we are in this situation. That's very common. And we call that 2D state of stresses because the real unknowns are these four stresses. This is either known or can be computed as a, a posteriori computed. So the real unknown are the stresses in this plane analysis, orthogonal to that principal stress, okay? So in fact, we can reduce the number of dimension of the, of the, of the problem. Instead of being a three times three stress, we can reduce just to look to the stresses of this matrix here, which is only a two times two. And we can recognize also sigma x here, tau xy, which is that one, normal to x direction to y, but the normal stress here is zero. So that's only one that matters. If I do a cut of this to this plane, I would try only, only find these stresses, sigma y, tau yx, tau, yx, tau xy, always positive, you know, this is a, a positive plane, this is a negative plane, so tau yx positive is in that sense, tau yx positive is in the other sense. <coughs> Sigma y positive is in tension in both cases, and negative would be in compression. And so that's a, the 2D plane where we, uh, a representation of the stress in these planes, which now are this square here, okay, but they represent in fact planes, passing through the point, and so on. So now let's see what happens in the concept of the circle of Moore when we are in this very common situation. Look, let's first consider one general plane passing through the point. That's the plane, right? The plane has an interior and an exterior. So a normal is the exterior plane. The normal is that, okay? So, and that normal is always towards the exterior. So, I mean, we consider the, the normal and then the exterior of the plane, uh, so as, as we consider here, right, the exterior of the plane here is that plane here, sigma, I, sigma y, that corresponds to that normal, which is the plane. In fact, this plane and this plane are the same with different normals. This has the normal 
uh, in direction y, this has the normal in direction minus y. Okay? So there is always a normal towards this geo of the, of the plane, that's what we consider. So there is a sign for this normal, a sense for this normal. So in that plane, in the plane we have attraction, of course, normal, uh, the normals to the planes, look, there is another, another coordinate which is just perpendicular to the plane of the space, and then the third component of the normal would be only zero. Okay? We are considering just planes, just which are parallel to the third coordinate, so planes obtained by turning, or considering different orientations of that, which are qualified by this angle theta. Look, the theta is the angle that determines the, norma the, the, the normal to the plane with respect to horizontal, is that also that angle, right? Look that there is a sense, positive sense for this theta. Theta is positive if it's anticlockwise, right? Theta is positive anticlockwise, so, okay. So the, the, the equation T equals sigma times N also applies here because if N has a third component which is zero, in that case here, uh, th these components are not affected. If I place here an N zero, zero, one, uh, sorry, X something, something, zero, then this, this stress doesn't affect because it's multiplied by zero in the equation sigma times N. So finally, what matters is the reduced equation the reduced stress in, in, in the components x and y, and the reduced n in the components x and y. What is the components of n? Look, if theta is the angle, the component of n, the of n is cosinus of theta sinus of theta. Okay? This is sigma. So if I want to, com want to compute t, I just have to multiply sigma times n. So this is the equation. Sigma x cosinus theta, tau x y sinus theta, etc. This is the, the traction, the expression of tractions, in terms of the uh, stresses, the component of the stresses, in a plane which is defined by this normal or equally with this angle. I insist, this angle, the angle of the trace of the plane with respect to the y axis is theta, or the angle of the normal to the plane with the uh, uh, direction of x is theta, always positive, it grows in the anticlockwise sense. Okay? Now let's we define a tangent vector. But this tangent vector also has a sign. Okay? We define that this tangent vector that we call M is always positive if it has a sense which turns to, uh, that's the way I have to define it, maybe you can find others. If it turns towards the interior, imagine a point at the interior side of the plane, right? So if it turns towards the interior in the clockwise, sense, that is called positive. So if M was in the sense, in, this, in that sense, that would be negative, right? Positive, M is positive always such that it turns to respect to, I mean, it, it tends, tends to, to turn, there's a very genuine concept, with respect to the interior of the plane in a clockwise sense, okay? So M, defined it like that, is just defined as the, the component x of m is positive, sinus of theta, and the component y of m is negative, minus cosinus of theta. Okay? So according to this convention, normal n is positive if it's pulling the plane, n would be negative if it was, well, I, look, sigma theta, the, com the component of, of the traction on n, sigma theta, if is positive, if it's positive, it means that it has the section, the, the, the sense of n, so it's pulling, tens, tensile. If sigma theta is negative, the projection of theta on n is negative, then it's pushing, so it's compressive, okay? But also for tau theta, tau is a tangential component of the traction, now it's positive if it has the sense of m. So it's positive, this tau, is positive if it's turns to, uh, to, towards the interior of the plane in an anticlockwise sense. If it becomes negative, that means that the tangential uh, component turns into the anticlockwise sense, okay? So there is a sign for tau theta here, okay? So let's compute sigma theta. How I compute sigma theta? Okay, I compute, I, I, I know t, and I project to n, so multiply t, that t, that vector, times n, that vector, <coughs> and I obtain a scalar 
which can be expressed in terms of the uh, double angle of theta, double value of theta, sigma x plus sigma y over 2, plus sigma x minus sigma y over 2, cosinus 2 theta, plus tau x y, y sinus on 2 theta. This is an analytical expression that in terms of the theta, the angle theta, which can take positive or negative values, remember, and depends on how is this angle positive in the anticlockwise. And this provides sigma theta. If sigma theta is positive, that means that it just follows the n directions, though, so it's tensile. If it's negative, it's compressive, right? But I could also compute tau theta by projecting t on the m, so multiplying t double uh, that product m, and it turns out to be that expression. And that expression is a number that could be positive or negative, depending on the values of sigma x and y, tau z, and also on the, pen, on the angle theta, okay? If it's positive, what can we say about this tangential stress tau theta? That it turns towards the interior in anticlockwise sense. If it's negative, we could use it to plot them in that, in that direction. So that turning around the interior in the anticlockwise sense. Okay? So these are two expressions that we are going to use for that. 